welcome back to part four of the Canvas Back Decoy Project. In this episode, we'll be covering some of the basic tools used for rounding and shaping the cork body of the Canvas Back Decoy. Cork is a relatively soft material. It carves easily, but it reacts differently to different types of tools. If you're using edge tools, such as a knife or something like that, it's best to use something that has a long, slender blade that is relatively thin. A good knife for that is something like this Case Trapper. Uh, the, the blade needs to be uh, long. A regular pocket knife doesn't have really a long enough blade, and you should always use the biggest tool that you can for the job. Uh, and with cork, it reacts better to slicing motions, and it also, it, it doesn't curl like wood when you start carving it, and so therefore the thinner the blade is, uh, you want that cork to be able to slide over the edge of the blade, and since it doesn't curl up out of the way. Another knife that uh, works extremely well for uh, rounding and reducing cork is uh, just a regular uh, uh, flay knife. This is a uh, high carbon steel uh, Rapella uh, flay knife. It's got a good sharp edge on it. You can resharpen it relatively easily. It hones well and it is extremely thin and so it facilitates uh, slicing off cork. It's long, you can make good long slicing motions and it helps remove the cork. Another knife that uh, seems a little bit uh, uh, unlikely is uh, this is a, uh, a quality uh, high carbon steel steak knife. This is a actually a, a, a Russell Green River uh, knife. It, uh, it is actually a kit that I bought and put it together as you can tell by the crude handles that go on it. But this is a steak knife and, and this, the principles of it are much the same as the, uh, the case knife or the fillet knife. It's got a good, uh, relatively long blade. It's got a thin blade. The bevel on it here is of such that it, it facilitates that cork sliding over uh, since it does not curl as it comes off the blade. I've got this draw knife out here. Uh, draw knives are indispensable for uh, carving decoys if you're carving uh, basswood or cedar. Uh, it does absolutely no good on cork. And this, this draw knife here, as you can see from the, the mirror polish on that bevel, uh, this draw knife is razor sharp. It will carve wood uh, like butter, but it just does not uh, work well on cork. You can do it, but uh, you're probably going to be frustrated using this type of tool. Just to show you the, the type of angle on that draw knife, that right there is set on the angle that the draw knife is set at, and as you can tell, uh, that's a pretty steep uh, bevel on the on the edge, so it just does not slice through the cork very easily. My favorite tools for uh, working uh, cork are uh, rasps, uh, files, and uh, shear forms. Uh, you don't need an expensive tool to effectively round and carve cork. One of the, the cheapest ones out here on the table that you see, a Stanley Sureform. It will, it will get after cork uh, very aggressively, and you can aggressively uh, reduce, reduce it. I don't like to do the whole reduction with this. I like doing it with a fillet knife, and then I, uh, I really get the, the final look that I'm looking for with uh, a tool like this. Moving from lowest uh, expense to highest expense, uh, you have the sure form there, Stanley. Uh, we have another type of sure form type uh, rasp here. Uh, this one was actually purchased from Woodcraft, and it, it uh, has a little finer tooth to it, so it, it's a little more uh, refining than the sure form, but it's a good tool. Uh, another one that I like to use, especially where my uh, body and uh, uh, either bottom board or tail inserts meet. Another good one to use is a Nicholson rasp. Uh, this is a Nicholson rasp. It's rounded on the bottom. 
and flat on the top. This is a uh, uh, one that's made uh, actually in Brazil. It's not one of the American-made Nicholsons. Uh, they get a lot of flack over that. Actually, it, it's it's not a bad rasp, as you can tell. The teeth do load up, uh, and that would be its biggest complaint. If your rasp starts loading up, especially when you get into wood with a lot of rosin in it, don't clean it with a file brush because they have steel brushes or steel bristles. Clean it with a brass, uh, soft brass bristle brush, uh, and so because otherwise you'll you'll destroy your file. The most expensive one here on the table and probably really the most effective is this RU uh, French hand stitch rasp. As you can tell it doesn't load up. It does a little bit but not bad. Uh, and this, this thing here is a three, a number three, which means it's very aggressive, good for roughing, and it will remove a lot of stock very quickly. So you know, if, you, if you get into it and decide you're going to do this quite a bit, uh, this is a, a fairly worthy investment. Uh, I happened to win this rasp, I didn't purchase it, and that's the reason why I'm able to have it, but it's about a $150 rasp. Another thing that you want to have in your arsenal is uh, you want to have a round rasp, and these are invaluable for getting into that, that juncture where the head and body meet. You want to have a nice pleasing round uh, shape or curvature, concave shape, and so this, this works really well. The rat tail file. Uh, helps you get into that uh, that area uh, very uh, accurately and, and uh, helps you get down to some of the smaller uh, radius uh, areas that you might need to get into. Another option, uh, and, and once again, these will remove stock very rapidly. This is a, a Fordham rotary tool. We have Typhoon bits and cuts all bits. Uh, they will really uh, allow you to uh, remove a lot of stock. Uh, when you do that though, be prepared and protect yourself from a lot of flying dust and debris because they will send it into the air. So be sure you wear eye protection, uh, be sure you wear uh, uh, at least a mask, have uh, good ventilation if you have a uh, shop vac or a dust collection system. Uh, they will be invaluable to you during uh, if you're using one of these. Now, can you use something smaller like a uh, like a Dremel? Uh, you can, not for very long. Uh, these are pretty heavy duty. You can use smaller bits, but you, can use this, you want to use the largest tool possible. Uh, a Dremel just isn't heavy enough, and you will burn the bushes out of them uh, relatively quickly. A little tip also when Using a rotary tool, you want to have a, a glove or something in your off hand. That's the hand that you're not holding the bit in, because it's the one that's going to get to get in the way of the bit. You know, you're going to be doing this, and this is the one that's going to get into it, not this hand. So uh, it doesn't hurt to wear a glove on this hand, but protect this hand. You'll get into it. Another thing is uh, be sure you wear something to protect your body. Uh, because you'll be cutting towards yourself a lot. Uh, so something like a good shop apron is a good thing to have. Uh, also, you want something that the teeth of the bit can't wind up in. Uh, I haven't done it myself, but I know a lot of people that have wound these bits up into a t-shirt. And uh, if, while they walked away from it relatively unscathed, uh, it does break the shaft on your machine. As you can see with this shop rag, it'll just twist it up like that if you're wearing a t-shirt and you happen to touch it, it'll wind it up and snap the shaft. So uh, protect yourself, protect your equipment, and uh, just take precautions. While it's not absolutely necessary when working with a cork decoy, uh, a way to hold your work is, is, is beneficial. That way you can use both hands. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, holding the work with one hand and holding your tool with the other. And that is a simple vise. Now in this case, this is a vise made out of a trailer uh, hitch ball. You loosen one of these, this one right here, and you can reposition it and simply tighten, and it goes back to being tight. This plate unscrews, 
and it attaches with two to four screws onto the bottom of your decoy to help you to help you hold it. Now, uh, just kind of some words of advice on this is um, one. This is another reason to have a bottom board is if you're going to use a work holding device like this. Uh, I would only use this type of attachment device if I was going to attach a a keel or have some way some way to cover up the screw holes uh, to keep water from getting into them. Uh, so that's an option. Uh, you don't have to have anything as fancy as a vise like this. You can merely, if you have something like this, bolt it or screw it to the bottom of your work, have a pipe, something in, in these threads here, and just merely uh, clamp it down in a, a machinist vise or a shop vise. It works. Once you get your cork body uh, roughed out, uh, it will need to be sanded. It doesn't need to be sanded uh, to a mirror uh, sur polished surface, but you will want to remove the facets created by, uh, you know, especially if you use a knife. Uh, rasps aren't so bad about leaving that, but you still will want to put a finish, a little bit of a finish on it. I use a handmade. Uh, sanding stick. Uh, it has this concave area right here so that it can follow the belt can, and the sanding belt can follow the contours and shape of a rounded object. Uh, this is easily made out of a, a piece of one inch by four inch wide uh, stock. I use oak in this case and you merely uh, make it to length to fit the appropriate size sanding belt. This happens to be a 30 inch by 1 inch sanding belt. It just slips over. You want to be able to slip it on and you can you can put a, a velcro strap velcro strap or something around it right here. The tension I like to just hold it and I don't like to hold that tension on because I want that to be able to to flex and follow the contours. So you don't leave flat spots when you say that.